This is something that we take very seriously. Well, we pretty much shut it down coming in from China. We're going to see what happens, but we did shut it down, yes. I, mean, I feel like our team as a, as a country is not ran by a great coach. Now the Democrats are politicizing the coronavirus. They tried the impeachment hoax, and this is their new hoax. Hey, I am officially declaring a national emergency. When we're talking about leadership and what's going on in our country, it's all about leadership. I'm the president, and I'm always responsible. Yeah, no, I don't take responsibility at all. The glaring differences between an elected president and one a foreign adversary inserted into our political system could not be more paramount in times of crisis. This has been a more aggressive Ebola outbreak than we've seen in the past. From Barack Obama. It's going to disappear. One day it's like a miracle. It will disappear. To the 45th president. During the Ebola outbreak in 2014, Obama sought to reduce the spread by utilizing the military to deploy both troops and medical personnel into West Africa to provide assistance and build treatment centers. Meanwhile, in 2018, the Trump administration fired the government's entire pandemic response chain of command, including the White House management infrastructure. Trust me, I'm like a smart person. Obama anointed a former vice presidential staffer, Ronald Klain, as a sort of epidemic czar inside the White House, clearly stipulated the roles and budgets of various agencies and placed incident commanders in charge in each Ebola hit country and inside the United States. You had a president who actually accepted and cultivated scientific advice, said Bina Venkaradaman, who was the chief policy advisor to the president's council of advisors on science and technology. Donald Trump did not push for aggressive testing because the president, quote, made clear the lower the numbers on coronavirus, the better for his potential re-election this fall. Former Deputy National Security Advisor Ben Rhodes said, I think, importantly, what Obama did leave Trump is a global health infrastructure that we had set up informed by the lessons of the Ebola outbreak. Anybody that needs a test can have a test, and the tests are all perfect. Another unpresidential lie. In 2014, Ron Klain, named Ebola czar of the Obama administration, serving formerly as chief of staff to Al Gore and Joe Biden, a well-respected politician. Who did Trump put in charge? My main business is real estate. I also own a newspaper and some other websites and online media businesses. Jared Bleeping Kushner. The president's wildly unqualified son-in-law is apparently playing a leading role in developing the White House's coronavirus response. Klain saw Trump's ill-informed attacks on Twitter, like the H1N1 swine flu epidemic killed thousands of people, and our response is one of the best. So Klain fired back. Facts. The Obama administration tested 1 million people for H1N1 in the first month after the first U.S. diagnosed case. The first U.S coronavirus case was 50 plus days ago for March the 12th and we haven't even tested 10,000 people yet. As Ven Karadaman says, Trump is talking about this virus as a foreign invader. He is using a travel ban at this stage in the epidemic where we already have community spread. The virus is already here in the U.S. instead of talking about global operation to address the pandemic. This is just my hunch. And so talked about having a hunch yeah. about what he thinks is going on. Instead of the scientific numbers. Exactly. A man so egotistical, he said in Scottish Parliament, he is the science. He is the expert. This is not the man to leave. It is the fraction of a human with the impulse of a 10-year-old and intelligence of a kindergartner. Want to limit the next catastrophe in this country? You know what to do. Sideline Trump and get to the polls. If you'd like to hear more thought-provoking content like TYT Sports on Facebook and to help in my journey to keep media independent, go to tyt.com Rick.